Put your hands together for Heidi Grunberg Daniels. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Heidi Grunberg Daniels. This evening, we're going to take a meandering little walk through several different stories. They may seem a little arbitrary, disconnected. Stay with me. Hang on. I promise you, by the end, I'll tie them all up in a delicious little bow. I want to start by telling you about a woman I met a year and a half ago. She knocked my little cotton socks off. I'm going to tell you what she said in her words, not mine, her words. My mother was a crackhead. By age nine, I too was a crackhead. By age 11, I'd had two different children by two different men. After that, I just plunged into a new low. All I did at that point was score, find somewhere to go get high, and then I'd think about death. I'd ponder all the ways I could end my life. Well, hang on a minute, I said. You're still here. It didn't happen. What happened? She said, out there somewhere are two little girls that don't know their mother. Out there somewhere are two children from my body that I don't know. She said something came into her life then that was so terrifying that would change her entire being. But even though she was filled with fear, she said, if I do it, if I do it, there's a possibility that I can meet those two little children. Let's leave her for a moment and move on to the little village in England where I was born and raised. I'd walk through country lanes and village streets over the years, and I would watch the trees have their evolution. In the winter, trees are stark, hard, angular, almost angry and barren. And then as you continue to walk, the trees get little buds, and the little buds became deep green leaves that reach up to the sun and the warmth. And then as the cool weather in the evening comes, those leaves become a dizzying pattern of oranges and yellows and reds and burnt beautiful colors. And the winds pull them from their branch home and they start this beautiful dance in the breezes and they fall to the ground. And again now, the tree is stark, hard, angular, barren, almost dead looking. Let's leave the trees and move on to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. She's a psychotherapist and she treats patients dealing with death, loss and grief. She developed the change graph to help them navigate the changes that one goes through in the process of grief. We all go through change or we try to go through change. When we first think about change, we stand at the precipice of something really difficult and unknown. Many of us never do it and some boldly pushed through to the new. Let's now move on to Sisyphus. Sisyphus in Greek mythology was doomed to push a boulder through eternity. Imagine pushing a boulder. I imagine the Santa Fe National Forest they have these massive cliffs with these giant immovable boulders on top. Imagine trying to push and push and push a boulder. Nothing happens. You put your back into it and you push with all your might. Nothing. You think, I'll push one more time and then that's it. I'm done. You push with every, everything you've got. That little vein in your forehead pops out, but you continue to push and you sweat and you push and eek. Wait, did I hear that? You push again, eek. That little eek. That represents the possibility of movement. So you continue to push and a wonderful force of nature kicks in momentum and it tips over the edge of that mountain and barrels down. One more story. A gentleman owns a shoe factory and he calls in his top two shoe salesman. He says, lads, I've acquired a brand new territory and as my top two shoe salesman, I want you two to go out and conquer it. Fantastic, we're honoured, sir. Where's this new territory, they say? Africa, the boss says. Big pregnant pause. Africa, the first shoe salesman says. But they don't wear shoes. The second salesman rises really, really slowly. He says, they don't wear shoes. Where one salesman saw nothing, the other salesman saw nothing but possibility. Like the trees in the winter, the life is no longer on the outside. The life now is underground. Bubbling in those roots is the possibility of next year's journey. Like Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's change graph, when we stand on the precipice, 
we all have to navigate the uncomfortable to get to the possibility of something new. Like Sisyphus pushing the boulder, the little eek, the possibility of movement, and the gentleman with the shoes, the possibility of shoes for a whole continent that doesn't wear any. The young lady we started with, she changed her entire existence because of the possibility of seeing her two children. I can tell you now, she is clean and sober, she went to school, she has a job, and she got her two girls back, and she gave them something she never had, a home. The last thing she said to me has nothing to do with possibility, but so bloody excellent, I want to share with you anyway. She said, and, and, I am a tax-paying citizen of Volusia County. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a possibility-filled evening. <laughs>